did I do that? Did you that? just I compare us right. to the cast of Friends? <laughs> yes, I did. Because same level of talent. Are you Monica? We're basically same, same level of talent. Are you Monica? Yeah. Who are you? I'm Phoebe. I'm a that little bit Phoebe. of a I'm a little yeah. bit of a Monica and a little bit of a Rachel mixed. Yeah, I agree. I probably trend more Monica. Company Theaters, RCT 360. I'm Deidre Sherm. I'm Laura Alley. And I'm Rachel Ratcliffe. And this week it is episode number 58 and we are celebrating rad dads. Now, a dad is every son's first hero and every daughter's first love, which I have to agree with that. And so ladies, I wanted to start off by asking you, What's the best advice that your dad ever gave you? Rachel, what do you think? Okay, mine is less advice and more a skill. My mm. dad was very, very left-brained. He was an engineer and he taught me how to pack a trunk of a car with such precision that you could put the finest of Fabergé eggs in there and they would not budge, they would not oh. budge. And, and to this day, I am still the person in the family that if people start putting things in the back of the car, I take it all out and I redo it. I like that. Thanks, Dad. That is excellent, excellent, excellent. advice from your father. Laura, what about you? I like that. Um, Rachel, I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, tag on to yours a little bit because my dad isn't. I don't think he would has given me any like verbal advice, but kind of what he big time instilled in my sister and I was that he wanted us to be able to take care of ourselves. Meaning he taught us things that he thought most women were not traditionally taught. Meaning we, every Sunday we would mow the yard. So he taught us how to mow the grass, wash cars, check your oil, change, you know, change the air in your tires, that kind of thing. So change the tire. Just cause he wanted us to be able to take care of ourselves. And it's just the little things that women are not traditionally taught. And so it was nice that he, you know, gave us those skills. I mean, they're valuable life skills and things that I still use today. So I'm appreciative of those things. At the time, I did not love them, but now I'm like, thank you for teaching me. <laughs> I have this vision of you and Michelle just angrily mowing the grass. Well, no, let me let me day. paint you a picture. Me mowing the grass, right? <laughs> my dad with the blower and my sister saying that she was going to go get us all drinks from the house <laughs> and never coming <laughs> I feel this. I, hey, I see this I, clearly. Uh, yep. she, she chose wisely. She chose wisely. He also made us do the yard, rain, sleet, or snow. And it was raining. And I was like, Dad, I'm not going out there in the rain. My hair will get wet. To which he took a Tom Thumb plastic bag and tied it onto my head and was like, now it's not going to get wet. Let's move. And I was like, oh my God, if someone I know drives by. Now, mind you, I'm like, 13, 14, 15 years old. So I'm in the yard mowing the grass. And I was like, if a friend drives by, my life is over. Yep. That's awesome. There's a visual um, for you. My dad was really practical too, but one of the best pieces of advice that he gave me was not the hands-on, but was more kind of for taking care of your heart instead of the yard. And he told me that God is seldom early, but never late. And he would apply that to so many things. And that really just said, you don't have to worry because at the right time, things are going to work out as they should. And I still say that to my kids today. So, hey, great advice all the way around. Um, you know, my daddy is in heaven for this Father's Day. And for all of you who are longing to be fathers or don't have your dad nearby, I love to say that we are living out this Father's Day with the legacy of love that our fathers put into our hearts. So we hope that you can enjoy that uh, this year as you think of them or maybe deal with some hard times. Now, for those of us who have fathers in our lives or maybe husbands and having to help our kids do Father's Day, I have a little suggestion for you because at this point, Father's Day is pretty close. So either you're gonna have to run out 
and do some quick shopping because I don't think Amazon's gonna get anything to you fast enough at this point, but here's a little idea. Instead of ordering the world's greatest farter's mug for your husband or for your dad, do mm. this. Find something that they love and then go do it with them. Maybe it's standing with them at the pond while they throw in the lure. Or do what Charlie and I did as we were scouting for Father's Day. We took a visit over to Shields, a department store we'd never been to, but we think my husband's gonna love it when we take him over there for Father's Day. Take a look at this. Can you hardly stand it? Where do you go? Where should you go? Where do you want to go? Holy cow. Hey, hold up. Where? What is there? All the softest stuff is right here. Hello, Emmett. I go. Oh, wow. Is that a good one? Yes, it is. Whoa. Let's go look at the dog. Oh, look, what's this? I didn't know they talk. I don't have to worry about hiding. I throw my fastball with all four seasons, so the ball has a good tire rotation. What do you think? How was your visit? Awesome. You like it? Yes. Is that place amazing or uh, what? Not what I expected. That is very cool. Not what I thought it was. No, holy cow, you had me at Ferris wheel. No <laughs> clue. I know, right. And you know what? We didn't even go. Apparently they have like a food court and it's, it's ridiculously crazy. But you know, my husband is going to appreciate his sons wanting to walk around this store as he looks and awes and gods over everything. So it was a lot of fun. So just some ideas. Just go well, and be with dad. Really good. That is a fantastic idea. And if Shields isn't your thing, how about taking your dad to see Camelot at Repertory Company Theater on Sunday. There are still some tickets available uh, and we've got some tickets for next weekend. And look, I mean, musicals get a bad rep of being something that maybe guys don't like, but guys do like musicals. And this one's great. Does he like Game of Thrones? This is like Game of Thrones, except, you know, without the graphic violence and, and the nudity. There's no nudity in this, is there, Laura? I have not seen it, but I'm gonna probably go with no. Okay, there's no nudity. Yeah, okay, no foul language, but there's a lot of singing and there's a lot of beautiful music and it's a fantastic cast. Definitely go check it out. And it is the first of our RCT 2021 summer musicals. It feels so good to say that with Big Fish and then The Wizard of Oz. So check it out, check out the website for more information on getting tickets. And uh, I have to ask you girls a question. Are you ready for your summer vacation? Uh, what about hours by the pool? Now I'm talking about coming up with great summer reads. Things, mm. not like I'm gonna read you and tell you what you're doing wrong. No, reading from a book, that kind of read. Um, there's a lot of great books out there, a lot of different things you can read from the summer. And we'd like for you to watch this clip from our associate producer, Amy Samuel. Take it away. My summer book recommendation for you is Eleanor Oliphant is completely fine. Eleanor is a socially awkward person who has had a traumatic past and you wonder how in the world is this kind of person created? And you learn about her life, why she is the way she is, 
and human interactions with her are just funny. And she has no idea why, because she's socially awkward and everybody else is like, what's going on? <laughs> it's very funny. It's a light read. By the end of the book, you're laughing, you're crying, and you just understand that maybe when you bump into somebody, you think maybe they have a past like Eleanor and the reason that they are the way that they are isn't just because they don't like you. It's because they've had traumatic past experiences that have made them to be the person they are. It's soon to be a major motion picture produced by Reese Witherspoon. So read the book and go see the movie and see which is better. Probably the book. My reading suggestion is my favorite book in all the world. The Woman in White by Wilkie Collins. It's a mystery full of intrigue and keeps you guessing all the way to the end. I love reading, but I drive a lot, so I listen to audible books. One of my past favorites um, just recently was listening to Matthew McConaughey read his book, Green Lights. It caused me to think. He had a lot of moments in his life that he called red lights that could have been devastating, and he turned those into green lights, which helped his career and his life flourish. It made me self-reflect on many of my own green lights and red lights. And the best part was listening to Matthew McConaughey read the book to me. Ooh, that sounds great, ladies, doesn't it? Uh, yeah, Matthew McConaughey reading anything to me. You know what I have to say about that, ladies? All right, all right, all right. Amy always brings it with really good recommendations. So I, I would happily read any of those books. Yes. And I'm definitely getting the McConaughey on, on tape. Right. Well, that sounds great. And uh, Rachel, you know what I would give a really good recommendation? Like, like a full five stars mm -hmm. recommendations? Yes, I know you know. It is Quarantine Confessionals and I cannot wait. So Rachel, take it away. Thank you, Deidre, and welcome to another installment of Quarantine Confessions. Come closer, closer, but not too close. Okay, friends, I don't want to toot my own horn too much, but I'm a fun mom. I can make make-believe trips to the grocery store for apples and bananas basically all day long. I can engage in a very serious conversation about the best monster on Sesame Street and have good opinions to, to back up my arguments. But here's the deal. Even as a fun mom, I'm not as much fun as a fun dad. Yeah, because if I'm at the playground, I'm still kind of twitching a little bit when my son climbs to the very top of the monkey bars. If dad and, and son are frolicking in a field, yeah, I might still be a little bit worried that he doesn't have on enough bug spray to prevent Lyme disease. And yes, when you are splashing and skipping rocks in a wonderful stream behind the house, I might have in the back of my head a concern that you're going to ingest some sort of flesh-eating bacteria that'll go to your brain. It's just me. It's just mom stuff. But that's okay, because it all makes the world go round. Because whereas a dad may not always think to put on bug spray, some do, some dads are really fun. And kids need both of those wonderful things. So dads, keep on keeping on. Be your fun, awesome selves. And together, we will try and raise children that don't grow up to need millions of dollars in therapy. And that is my quarantine confession. Put on your helmet. No, put it on. I don't care what your father said, put it on. Rachel, I can totally relate. Thank you for that and cheers to all the fun dads. <laughs> well, now we're gonna take a turn and Lara is gonna give us a little look at what happens behind the scenes at RCT. Take it away, Lara. 
Welcome to Behind the Scenes and look about we, what we have going on here behind the curtain at RCT. Our summer, summer musical season has begun. As Rachel mentioned, there are tickets still available for Camelot this Sunday and next weekend. There are tickets available online and at our box office. And here's a fun look at some behind the scenes at this fantastic show. Take it away. I am going next weekend and seriously, like that cast looks amazing. They are That's stellar. I was just thinking, yeah. I mean, talk about all-stars, it's gonna be so good. Absolutely, 100%, cannot wait. So thank you for sharing with us that little look behind the scenes. And ladies, oh, we are at the end of episode 58. That's it, can you believe it? I can't believe it's been 58 episodes. Nope, they keep popping up in our Facebook memories now that it's been an entire year. But what a year it has been to spend with you two and to all of you who are watching. We have enjoyed this time with you so much. We hope to see you again soon. We'll be back here in two weeks with a little bit of Fourth of July fun. But until then, I am. You are. We are. R. R. C. C. T. It's not going to be long until we hit the point where all of our hair is about the same length. I right? Know. I know. We're mm -hmm. all going to look the same. I'll catch up. And we'll be we, exactly starting to the merge same. into one we'll person. We're going to match up. I know Rachel has a complicated relationship with snakes. That's true. I have a little complicated relationship with a lot of things, I think is the takeaway here. Amphibians. That's all right. That's all yeah. right. That's because you have standards. It's because you have standards. <laughs> I have standards. That's right. Thank you. You mm -hmm. hold those complicated relationships. Keep your standards. <laughs> Keep it up. My time hop from today was teach us your talent or show us your talent. It was RCT 360, show us your talent. That yep. was it. I was like, oh, I remember I that know. one. Mm -hmm. Yep. Back when we were in double single digits, still. Yeah. Isn't it so funny that now we're time hopping our room? <laughs> yeah. That's how long, long show. How so long we've been doing this? I'm gonna have to go turn the air conditioning on because I'm having a hot flash from hell, <laughs> and I gotta turn the air off. I'm, I'm starting to sweat and turn red. I'll be right back. It'll take two seconds. That's awesome. It's That's great. Awesome. Every time John t talks, this little fountain in the background. I know, I think yeah. he's peeing. Makes me, it sounds like he's peeing or that it makes me happy. <laughs> like, John, do you need to be excused? We need a break. <laughs> yeah, I got a bucket here. Yeah, okay. Everybody yeah. but Laura. Oh, I like that one. Yeah. Mm. You're welcome. Okay. One okay. more time. Sing it one more time. Wait, sing it one more time. Everybody, Everybody That was the echo effect. Echo effect. I feel like I've been doing it even better, Ooh. better, better. Ooh. Ooh. That's our fun. That's our fun. Oh, I like your Those little wave so there. Fun. You yep. like Jimmy. friends mm -hmm. get together on the floor? Yes. Now, I'm Phoebe. 
friends. She's Rach, Rach, <laughs> Rachel. Rachel is, is Rachel. Is 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 uh, not Rachel. Monica. It's Monica. I know that's confusing. You look Rachel's like Brady Bunch. Rachel. You look more like Brady Bunch right now. Right? Oh office. yes. As long as I'm not Ross. A little thing. Right. All the love to all of our dads. Happy Father's Day.